Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Brienne Beebe. I am a high school math teacher and I've been teaching geometry for 10 years now. So today's video is the first of a new series. I'm going through what I teach in geometry, kind of how I teach it, why I teach it that way, etc. Sharing like tips and tricks and everything from the interactive notebook that I use to teach geometry with. So today we're starting out with our first unit, which I refer to as lines and angles, but could also be referred to as introduction to geometry. However, I have a couple of topics that precede the unit. So before we actually dive into using interactive notebooks, I start out with algebraic proofs. And this allows me to one, review equation solving with my students, and to two, introduce them to proofs in a way that is non-threatening and actually pretty simple. They usually do really well with that lesson and kind of say, why does everybody complain about proofs? And you know, they get it when we get there, but this first topic I don't do in the interactive notebook. So usually our first week of school starts on Wednesday and this topic we usually cover on Friday. So I like to give my students the weekend to be able to go shopping and get an interactive notebook. So we actually start the notebooks on Monday. So this is like a before the notebook. So it's done on like a worksheet guided notes type thing rather than in the notebook. So the first lesson that actually goes into our notebook again is before the unit, but it's on polygon angles. So this is a foldable. We go through different polygons. We have quadrilateral, pentagon, hexagon, octagon, decagon, and then we talk about the special case of the n-gon. And we go through a little discovery activity of figuring out how many degrees each shape is if you were to add up all the angles. So that's the very first one that we do. This is like a little booklet style foldable where we do the discovery activity on the front and then on the inside we have some practice questions and then we get to the exterior angles. Now that topic I think a lot of people would cram in with the quadrilaterals but it's weird to have like a quadrilateral unit and then focus on shapes that are not quadrilaterals within it so I kind of like to do it first but it also is a good way of reviewing how many degrees there are in triangles and quadrilaterals. That's something that they should know coming into geometry and they often do. Um, and then we just talk about some of the other shapes. I also find that it's helpful to cover that lesson before we go into symmetry in the transformations unit. Okay, so starting out with introduction to geometry, our first official lesson in this unit is on points, lines, and planes, basically your undefined terms. So we have this little six door foldable. We have the main keywords, or vocabulary words and then under the flap we have the definition an illustration and how to name that figure so i include point line plane like the main ones you would expect line segment ray and then i also cover angles in that same day the next day i have a two-page spread and it's just like really basic guided notes we have collinear versus coplanar and just looking at some of these plane diagrams where it's really confusing and so I take a lot of time to explain that to students because it's like you know you're looking at something that's meant to be 3D but it's represented on this 2D piece of paper in front of you so I do a lot of like this I'm like this is what they're doing they're you know they're crossing each other and we talk about different planes what it looks like when the planes intersect and then what I use as a visual is actually just my classroom I say you know the wall right here is a plane the ceiling up here is a plane but look at where the ceiling and wall connect what would you call that right there and we talk about how it's a line and how about where you get to a corner where three of them cross you're getting to a point different things like that and then we talk about more specifically the different intersections and we get to that here on this page. So on the day that I cover the vocabulary and these intersections, we have a vocabulary matching activity where students match the vocabulary term with a diagram with the definition. I have it so it's like a physical thing where students actually have the little pieces of paper that were cut out and laminated and they stick on the paper that they're matching to with velcro dots but I have a digital version and I'll insert an image of something here so you can see what it looks like but whether I'm showing you the printable or digital here it's the same thing it's very simple it's just a little matching activity just to practice that concept because they need to know this for the whole rest of the year okay so our next topic is going to be the segment measures so here we're talking about the ruler postulate which is not shown on this page this is like an older version um, and then we talk about 
segment bisectors and midpoints so a lot of these pages coming up these are booklet foldables so there's not like flaps or anything but it just opens up and that way i'm getting three pages and it only takes up one actual page of the notebook so i love that feature the next thing that we talk about is angle measures where we have protractor postulate angle addition postulate and then angle bisectors so we spend a fair amount of time practicing these and I go back and forth from year to year about how much time I want to spend practicing them because these are like building blocks in bigger more complex um, problems that students will encounter later on in the year but it's also like they're never gonna see a question just on this on a test which is also just I'm going on a tangent here but it's just frustrating making up the unit test for this because it's not like the things that we practice in this unit are going to be asked just by themselves on our end of the year exam and I model my unit tests on the exam that we have at the end of the year so that's just a personal thing it's not anything that you have to do um, or necessarily advice that I'm giving I'm just musing on what I've noticed over the years so after that we move on to our angle pair relationships which is one of the bigger lessons in this unit so I will actually spend three days here one day for notes and then two days just practicing this so I split it up into angles that add up to 90 degrees the angles that add up to 180 degrees and then the angles that are congruent so we start out with the definition of adjacent angles just so students understand what that means to see them next to each other we talk about complementary angles and perpendicular lines and that symbol that we see with perpendicular lines indicating that there's a right angle. When we talk about angles that are adding up or summing to 100 degrees, we're talking about supplementary angles and linear pairs and the linear pair postulate. And then for angles that are equal, we just have vertical angles there. So with the vertical angles, you can kind of show that because there's a hinge on the scissors, when you open this up, you're creating the same angle over here. It is just a little bit hard to visualize though because scissors are not perfectly straight. They're contoured to fit your hand comfortably. But you can see that there's a difference between the angles here and the angles here, but that the angle here and the angle here are the same. And if you focus in like right where the the actual like metal part of the scissors are, it makes a lot more sense. So that's something to tell students like you're not looking at the handles because that's um, designed to not completely show this example, but you can see it here and here and then here and there. Now when it comes to specific practice activities, I do something different every year. I'm just going to link below what I do have available and I'll see, you know what, I'll also link to anything that I've used in the past if I can find it. Um, so you might see things that are in my Teachers Pay Teacher store, but you might also see things that are available from other sellers as well. Okay, then our next topic is the other biggie of the unit, parallel lines and transversals. Some teachers will go into like parallel lines and no, non-parallel lines with transversals and then the parallel lines and transversals. I just cut right to the chase because I don't want to make it more difficult or confusing than it is. So we talk about what parallel lines are what a transversal is so we do that vocabulary and then we talk about the I can't remember if they're postulates or theorems but we talk about um, the four main relationships that are formed there and then for my students that don't get it that really struggle I tell them like look at the angles we talk about how the diagrams in geometry are not always drawn to scale but with parallel lines I tell them you can actually trust your eyes here if you see two angles that are both obtuse they're going to be equal to each other. If you see two angles that are acute, they're going to be equal to each other. And if you're looking at two angles, one's acute, the other one's obtuse, they obviously cannot be equal to each other, but they are automatically supplementary. So I kind of break it down for them like that. So that way, if they're really lost, they could still get by just using some common sense. But that's not to say that I'm not stressing the vocabulary I am. It's just, you know, you take the wins that you can get. And sometimes this is just not one of them. So after going over the postulates and theorems here, we have some practice problems on the inside. This one here I adapted from our textbook and it's kind of hard to see, but all the, all eight of the angles are numbered and it's asking students like if angle one is this many degrees, find how many degrees the rest of the angles are and state a reason for it. So it's a little bit of that reasoning that we'll have to use in proofs, but it's very simple and not actually doing a full on proof. 
And then the rest of the examples here are algebraic and there's some that are just showing some different kinds of diagrams that aren't very obviously parallel lines with transversals like we get used to seeing from here. So we do spend another three days on parallel lines and transversals and then we move on to proofs. So we do a little bit of proofs of lines and angles. I don't stress it a ton because it's usually not what we are seeing on our end of the year exam, at least not exclusively. Sometimes we'll have parts of a line and angle proof that are part of a bigger proof of triangles or quadrilaterals. So I give them this thing. This is kind of a monster, but it shows different givens that they could have, the conclusion that they would make, and then on here they're filling in what is the property or theorem that makes this true. So most of our lesson is actually spent filling this in and then we go into the inside. Again, it's another booklet and then we just have some practice proofs here and they're all algebraic, so nothing crazy yet. So we took what they learned or yeah, what we learned when we were reviewing solving equations and now we're just applying it to a little bit of geometry where in order to write their equation, they are stating some kind of property or theorem. But like I said, we're not stressing this. So I do that for one day and then the next day we have just regular line and angle proofs that are not algebraic. And here I am setting them up for actually doing two column proofs. So I give them some pointers. I list out possible reasons for line segments and for angles and then we talk a little bit about the notation where we would see like line segment AB is congruent to line segment CD and how that's different from having AB equal to CD. And then on the inside of that booklet we have four proofs where we are just practicing lines and angles proving that basically things are congruent. Um, we have one that we're proving them parallel, one where we're proving angles supplementary. This would be um, a lesson to do extra practice on if you really want to emphasize it but I kind of wait until we get to the triangles to really focus on proofs because it's stressful for students quite honestly and the lines and angles like I said it's not so emphasized on our end of the year exam so I don't stress it too much at the beginning of the year okay so that is everything that I do for my first unit of geometry kind of broken down more focused on the topics less on the actual activities but those will be linked below if you have any questions please don't hesitate to leave a comment and as always thanks for watching